here. I'm a doctor in natural medicine. And ever since I started working with you, incredible people, my days have been busier than ever. Seriously, these days I even dream about working. And I'm pretty sure even my dreams require scheduling a follow-up now. But let me tell you something, I wouldn't have it any other way. You guys are truly amazing and working with you is not just my job, it's my passion. You're fighters, you're knowledgeable and you're deeply committed to your health. Every consultation with you really inspires me. Your determination, your willingness to learn and your desire to take control of your kidney health are what make this work so rewarding. And yes, because of your incredible response, my personal organizer is packed. I'm already giving appointments for the end of October and that's a reflection of how many people are stepping up to prioritize their health. But don't worry, I'm making sure I have time for each of you because your health deserves that level of dedication. And even if you are not going to book a consultation with me, I can still help you. In fact, today I want to focus on what works for everyone, the strategies and tips that can benefit all of you, no matter where you are in your kidney health journey. Because it's true that a working strategy against kidney disease requires personalization, but there are also tips, vitamins and foods that I've seen make a real difference for each and every patient. So that's what I'm here to share with you today. Starting with day one, antioxidant therapy. Antioxidants are amazing. They can help patients in all the stages from stage two to stage five, sometimes people on dialysis included. There are documented cases in medical literature of dialysis patients actually stopping dialysis after receiving antioxidant therapy. The magic ingredient behind it? CoQ10, a powerful antioxidant that I recommend taking with selenium. Now, using this antioxidant to escape dialysis is not a result we can reliably aim for, but what about using them to slow down the progression of the disease in stage 3 and 4? Yeah, that's what antioxidants excel in. And it's crystal clear from my experience that CKD patients at all stages can benefit from this kind of therapy. But let's get to the party you've all been waiting for. What are the best antioxidants for your kidneys? Well, let me give you the rundown of your new A treatment. Vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, NAC, selenium, and of course, CoQ10. Because, well, we've already established that one's the headliner. But here's the deal, guys. Just because antioxidants are amazing doesn't mean you should go out and buy every single one and dump them down your throat like they're M&Ms. Don't be that person. Seriously, start slow one at a time. Don't get carried away and most importantly, get informed. I have put the right doses for most antioxidants in my slide. Take a look, maybe take a screenshot. Seriously, nobody wants to overdose on vitamin C and risk kidney stones, for example, so get informed. Actually, making slow changes is the theme of this whole video. This is why I titled it Improve in 6 Days, alright? Because these changes should be implemented gradually. It could be one a day or one a week, just don't rush it. Ok guys, let's move on. Up next, day 2, a super easy dietary tip that always works. You ready for it? Start every meal with your favorite vegetables and fruits. Yep, it's that simple, but it's still a very useful tip because, and here's the thing about the renal diet, it's basically a long list of all the things you can no longer have. Phosphorus, gum, protein, cut that out. Sodium, sugar, packaged foods, restaurant foods, yeah, say goodbye. Every time I drop this bomb on a patient, they look at me like I just told them their favorite TV show got cancelled and the first thing out of their mouth is always the same. And now, what do I eat? And that's a very legit question. I mean, no one's going to be dancing with joy when you tell them to quit 95% of what they've been eating their entire life. You'd be pissed too if someone told you to trash your favorite foods and start over like your 
on some terrible reality show where the prize is not ending up in dialysis. That's why before I start playing the food police, I always hit them with the good news. They are actually foods you can eat. Shocking, right? And these aren't just okay foods. Oh no, they are super foods. Foods that are super healthy and great for your diet include Actually, most fruits and veggies. Seriously, there are so many fruits and veggies with health and kidney supporting properties that it never occurs that I have to tell a patient to avoid this or that fruit. Well, except for the grapefruit, of course. Instead, what I tell them is to eat every day at every meal before every other food a few portions of their favorite fruits and veggies. Yes, you can start your meal with fruit. You have my blessing. Heck, you can even make fruit your main course if you want. And yes, this even applies to you, diabetics in the crowd. I know, I know you're clutching your glucose meters in fear, but calm down. Eating fruit doesn't mean your blood sugar is going to throw a party. In fact, there is evidence, real evidence, that says fruit can actually improve your diabetes numbers. Still don't believe me? Well, this meta-analysis included 19 randomized control trials with 888 participants, which is like saying it's rock solid. And as we can see, it shows that diabetes patients that consume fresh fruit had a reduction in fasting blood glucose concentration of 12.82 on average. That's not just a number, that's a meek drop. So yeah, go ahead and eat that apple. You have my full permission. And what I want you to do every morning, either if you have diabetes or not, is to prepare yourself a few portions, let's say six to eight of fruits and vegetables. Find what you like. What's in season? Go for it. Love berries? Grab those. Hey kale, guess what? You don't have to eat it, you're free. Wash those fruits and veggies and leave the peel on when you can because why waste the good stuff? And have them ready for your day. Trust me, when your fruits and veggies are prepped, it's so much easier to eat them. It's like fooling your brain into making better choices. No compromise, no guilt. And best of all, your kidneys will love you by the end of the day. Okay, up next, day three, another super easy tip. Take a renal multivitamin. Yeah, that's right. When it comes to fighting kidney disease, your vitamins are like your Instagram followers. You can never have enough. But hold your horses because you also have to be picky about this stuff. Regular multivitamins, they are not safe for people with kidney disease. You want something made specifically for you. Why? Well, while you probably won't end up in the ER by taking a multivitamin, there are actually some horror stories of kidney patients risking their lives because they took too much vitamin A or got incautious with the vitamin C. But as I was saying, you still need certain vitamins, especially if you're on a plant-based diet or your doctors got you on ARBs or ACE inhibitors. So what's the solution here? A multivitamin designed just for your kidneys, obviously. None of that grocery store garbage packed with ingredients you can't even pronounce and definitely shouldn't be taking. Nope, you need one that's got the Goldilocks formula. Not too much, not too little. We're talking no vitamin A, no vitamin K, exactly 6 micrograms of vitamin B12, 60 milligrams of vitamin C, 300 micrograms of biotin, and 1,333 micrograms of folate. This is actually what most renal multivitamin brands offer. And while these numbers aren't set in stone, they're backed by enough studies to make your head spin faster than a centrifuge. But which brands can you trust with your pressure? kidneys oh don't worry i've done the homework for you you've got renovite nephrovite pro renal plus and pure gen loves kidney vite they're all safe bets so go ahead shop around like you're looking for the best deal on black friday and find the one that suits you best <laughs> 
Or if you're already taking one of these, good on you, keep it up. Now here's something you definitely don't want to mess up. Check if your multivitamin has vitamin C. If it does not, you need to supplement it because your kidneys don't just love it, they demand it like a needy toddler at bedtime. Some goes for vitamin D. I know everyone's all about the vitamin D these days, like it's the new avocado toast, but seriously, almost every CKD patient needs it. But while almost all patients need vitamin D, some can safely take an OTC supplement for it and some others will need a prescription form. So my advice here is to double check with your doctor and also to follow my next piece of advice. All right, buckle up for day four, folks, because we're talking about something as obvious as checking if your coffee maker has water before heating brew. Get tested for vitamin D and phosphorus levels. Okay, guys, it always baffles me the number of CKD patients that in 2024 are still not being tested for these two levels in particular. I mean, having a nephrologist that doesn't prescribe you these tests is just like going to a car mechanic and the guy forgets to check your oil level. Spoiler alert, missing these two tests is a disaster waiting to happen. Now, these two tests aren't just some minor details. You can skip over like the terms and conditions on your iPhone update. Nope, they're two of the most important tests a CKD patient should be getting regularly. Yet, somehow, they're always left in the back seat, overlooked like the broccoli on your dinner plate. And guess what? When these numbers are off, they can do more damage than your ex at a family reunion. Seriously, having your phosphorus and vitamin D in the wrong range can do an exceptional amount of damage. Why, you may ask? Because when your vitamin D goes down, your phosphate levels go up usually and when this happens it's like removing the wrong piece in the jenga of ckd complications yeah the whole tower goes down and we start to see stuff such as proteinuria two low calcium levels bone problems vascular calcification tired problems fatigue and more and whole pandora's box of health problems and just for having missed two tests it's like rubbing a magic lamp and instead of three wishes the genie curses you with an infinite subscription to medical bills yay and just for two missing tests and it all could be avoided by paying attention to those two numbers phosphate levels and vitamin d levels and by supplementing accordingly it's like the simplest fix ever yet here we are still pretending it's not necessary yeah get your doctor to prescribe you those tests day five here's a super easy tip that doesn't involve talking your doctor into doing more work drink more water yeah water is very important because the way the kidney works is simple it filters the fluids in your body in order to remove toxins and scores to do that the kidney needs water asking your kidneys to do their work when you're dehydrated it's like asking your kidneys to climb mount everest with no oxygen they start holding on to water like they're prepping for an apocalypse and all the nasty stuff creatinine urea sodium potassium and even sugar starts piling up in your body faster than junk mail oh and don't forget oxalates which decide to form kidney stones because apparently they like making your life extra painful yeah it turns out dehydration is a way more common cause of kidney stones than eating kale just don't tell that to health influencers anyway to sum it up dehydration equals kidney damage there are even reported cases of people getting acute kidney injury from dehydration Yep, you can literally damage your kidneys just by forgetting to drink water. Isn't life fun? So in short, you want to keep as far from dehydration as possible, all right? And we used to recommend eight cups of water a day. But today, some research tells us that both men and women may need a lot more than that. Now, here's the part where I say something radical. Don't obsess over precise numbers because, let's be real, if you're out there measuring every ounce of water like it's rocket fuel, that's going to get old fast. Want a strategy that works in the long run? Find ways to trick yourself into drinking more water, like a 
Hydration Ninja. How do we do that? Well, first of all, always bring water with you. See, I have a water bottle here. When I see it, it reminds me to drink more water. Put a bottle of water in your car, one in your purse or backpack, and put one next to your bed and chug a glass the moment you wake up like a hydration champion. Get in the habit of making yourself teas every morning. The key is to sneak water into your day however you can, like it's a convert mission to save your kidneys from meltdown. And of course, the exception here are those patients in stage 5 or in dialysis who have a water allowance. In that case, always make sure you are not overshooting your daily intake. Day 6, the last tip, maybe the most important. If you'd ask me, what's something that can protect the kidneys of all chronic kidney disease patients in all the stages and no matter the cause, something that can help with high blood pressure, with diabetes, with proteinuria, and that can make the difference even alone between losing kidney function and improving well. Of course, I'm talking about a proper renal diet, a diet that's plant-based and most importantly low in protein and in phosphorus. Guys, it's crystal clear today, most of the problems associated with kidney disease are caused by toxin buildup, alright? And most of these toxins actually come from the metabolism of protein and from the phosphorus that comes with this protein. The more protein you eat, the more toxins you're creating and your kidneys are working over time without getting so much as a thank you. We're talking around the clock shifts holidays included with no pay or benefits. How do we give them a break? By cutting back on protein and phosphorus. And do you want to see what happens when a CKD patient is started on a proper renal diet? Well, the video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Take care.